Adam Peller from Earth. Classification Human. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Netflix Explorers podcast, the podcast that does two years just to bring these movies to you. From the 1890 studios, my name is Dale. That's right. We're in our second year of exploring the depths and bringing you the bowels of the Netflix to the forefront. I'm Adam. I got the notes hot off the press. I'm Pat. Today we're going over the Discovery, Whole Nine Yards, and Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tale. Please, please, stick around. Hello! Again, we sit here across from one another in but a quiet studio space. <laughs> Three guys. You still got the old Betsy voice. Yeah, I got you can't the, get rid of it. <laughs> the old Betsy. Old Betsy. Hello. It's good to see you. <laughs> Season two, dude. Season two. We're back here for year two. Can you believe? Can you believe we've done one thing for one year? I uh, know. We're, we're usually the spontaneous group, but hey, we stick with Whiskey Gingers, and we just we do podcasting. Speaking of which, I'm just recovering from that E.T. and Ginger hangover from the awards party. Oh, That was man. nuts. That was pretty wild, but uh, we had a good time. I yeah. thought we were never going to speak about the after party ever again. <laughs> so, Well, just... I, I just wanted to touch on, you, you know. He's talking about the main podcast, not oh, even the after oh, party. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, that was lit, too. <laughs> yeah, I was talking in the middle of it when Gertrude put me in that headlock. Right. Oh, that was pretty God. wild. That was pretty wild. Instantly. Michelle broke that chair. You remember her doing that? Yeah, we still have a piece somewhere. Well, Papa Steve, I don't know why we invited all the nominees. That was the problem. Papa Steve elbow dropped. It was from the top ropes. It was great. <laughs> uh, fantastic evening. So, yeah, well, this is season two. This is year two. I don't know what we're doing with seasons here, but this is our second year. This is We've done this. 365 days of nothing but Netflix brought to you guys. So, we appreciate... Well, I mean... Let's stop. Thanks, everybody, for listening, really. Oh, definitely. Um, uh, we d- we do this because we're bros and we like to get together, but um, we like you know we like when people like what we put out. You know, It's just fun to send something out into the world and get a little uh, hat tip back. So anyway, uh, I don't know what's going to be on the website, Patrick. Now, no polls anymore. We've been pounding no, let's, let's, We won't have the uh, year in review polls. So, so you're going to have something up there at 1890studios.com. Yeah, I could start. The next year's poll, right? A year in review movie set two, yeah. starting with yep. three movies. We'll do something. Why don't you do that? Yeah. All right. Let's podcast. Let's podcast. Okay. Oh. Uh, first one up, I got the Discovery. Adam, you're the docket master here for this 2017 film. Two years after the afterlife is scientifically proven, a man attempts to help a young woman break away from her dark past. 6.3 IMDb drama mystery romance. Just real quick, what did you think of it, Adam? I thought it was pretty good. Oh, you did? <laughs> <laughs> you liar. No, I, no, I actually did not enjoy the movie. But I, was well, dis- I was disappointed. 102 minutes, it's wheelhouse, and it's a Netflix original. Uh, let's go ahead and roll the trailer, Adam. Dr. Harper, why did it take you six months to address us? Where have you been? I want to say the same Seems thing to, to the director. That. I invite Ooh. you here. Oh, Robert Redford. Uh, Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. We only received. Oh, no, that's not her. I know she's in uh, The Last Man on Earth. Reached a million. She's in uh, The Last Back to the Future, too. My Netflix original film. Don't you think your discovery was just too dangerous to share with the world? Isla! Jason Siegel of uh, Freaks and Geeks fame. Can you keep a discovery so vital to our existence a secret? You proved the existence of an afterlife. I prefer to call it a new plane of existence. Do you feel responsible for can, all this? Can we even talk about what's happening now? Or not? Um, we open the quick door shot. for these people. Now we have to show them what's behind it. It's like everything's on fast forward in this trailer, right? Except for this. The discovery, a Netflix original film. March thirty-one. We caught it a little early, or very late. I suppose. Mm, yes. Um, 
So, the discovery. Uh, I got some notes here. I want to roll through. Patrick puts these notes together every week. We're going to go ahead and start rattling off some stuff here. First one up, the movie is shot in 25 days only. Definitely showed. That's, uh, yeah, that's a quick... Zero time for reshoots, no matter how bad the dialogue was. <laughs> the film was originally written to take place in a sleepy rural town area. Uh, director Charlie McDowell and his team eventually rewrote the movie to fit in the Newport, Rhode Island location because of how much they fell in love with the visuals in the area. I will say visuals a big uh, uh, redeeming factor for this one. Mm. Uh, I... I do like, you know, Robert Redford was good. Who's this? Mary Steen Burgeon. That's the uh, that's the um, woman from Back to the Future 3. I forget her name. Oh, the interviewer in the first five minutes of the movie? Yes, I think. Yes, exactly. And then... Who was in the trailer, yeah. That's the last you saw of her? Yeah. yeah. I f- I, maybe I did. I don't know. Spoiler alert. Well, I don't, I'll take the mantle. I, I, I will be... Favorite. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I did take quite a few notes, but... I half, I three quartered robbed this one. Mm-hmm. I couldn't timeline restrictions. You know, Adam wanted to play video games. It, it could not. Oh, uh, don't put this on me. I could not get through all this. So, ending wise, I'm not going to be able to go off how it like everything wrapped up. Uh, Patrick, talk to me. Yeah. So I know this is a little bit early for uh, going over this, but rewatch and recommend. I decided five minutes into this movie. That I was not going to rewatch it, and I was not going to recommend it to anybody. Yeah. But I did stick around for the whole movie. Okay. Just, I was like, well, maybe there'd be something that changes my mind at any point during the movie. But right. But it didn't. Like, right. this is this is how I feel Papa Steve watched Tank 432. <laughs> right. Because you guys were talking, like, something's going to happen. We we're waiting for something to happen. Things are happening in this movie, but they're just not good. The yeah. dialogue is very forced, like especially the opening scene with uh, Robert Redford. Not Jason, say uh, Jason Siegel. Siegel, yeah. I for I thought it was Jason Segal in this movie, and I think he would have done a better role or a better is job. Is that Segal's son? Steven Segal's son? Or, yeah, Steven Segal. Oh, you want yeah. Steven Segal? If he would have been in, I would have much rather watch this movie because then I would expect something totally different than what I got. Okay, Adam. Redeem this one, sell this one. Talk to me. What did you think about this? Well, I was I was disappointed. Okay. With this movie, I'm not gonna lie. What were you expecting? What what was disappointing to you? Well, I put it on the docket because of the great premise. Uh, it's and okay. it's got a good cast. We got a great cast: sure. Robert Redford, Jason Segel. Robert Redford proves there's an afterlife. Yeah. And the movie takes place about six months after he announces it to the world. Since then, suicide rates have gone up through the roof. Everyone wanted to see what's going on. Sure. So, I mean, I'm like, oh, holy cow. Yeah. Society-defying. Indeed. Hey. Oh, sure. Uh, great concept. Great cast. Yeah. Let's, what's let's, not to like? Let's explore. Sure. All right. So we go down the rabbit hole, and it just, it really abandoned what was appealing about it and just kind of made a normal movie. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You had such a big thing you could have played with. Yeah. And you just kind of like... Use that as a gimmick and not as a driving force. And what I was I was feeling throughout this thing was this is a student film, and I got no qualms with any student in film school and making your elaborate uh, you know films and making them out there and far out. But it was just it kind of as Patrick said that the dialogue was forced and dull, and it never brought me in. I felt like I was outside looking in on this movie, and it was happening, and I was going, "Okay, when are you gonna when are you yeah. gonna let me it, like this?" I'm glad you said that though in your first comment when you said visually great because I wrote that down too. I'm like Dale will like the visuals. In yeah, this movie. and the color was good. It all looked good, and um, the yeah color lighting also was very cool. It just Story wise was yeah I get what's happening all right I don't need a Michael Bay fast forward explosions but I need a little more than this it just became to like it just devolved into a basic drama and romance story yeah when it could have been something incredible right yeah again you had so much to work with you could have done whatever yeah going off of what you just said like it started off like we are going to explore the afterlife. And then by 35 minutes in, it's taking a turn. It's like love interest. But, oh, wait, we're coming back to afterlife. And then right. it's just like, it. it's not that it didn't know what it was. It's that it knew what it wanted to get across. But the way 
everything came across, it didn't mesh well with each other. So right. I was really upset with the uh, the plot of it, the dialogue. Yeah. I really thought about seven minutes in, I thought, okay, they're going to play Robert Redford up to have like a God complex. And it's going to come out that his like research is flawed and he's not going to. Oh, okay. And he's like, and he's going to have to own all these suicides or something. Yeah. You know, like that a minute. Draw- I think I just wrote a better movie. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> like, yeah. You drew me in. I would have liked to see how that would play <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I mean, what? Do, okay. Then how about this? G- give me the, uh, you know, season two. We're going to do something new. I've just decided right now. Sell it to me for good. And then kill it for me for bad. How about that? Either, uh-huh. either, either. Give me, give me its pros. Give me its cons. How Working title, but I like the concept. Okay, we're doing a little pros and cons here. I say pro. If you want to see Robert Redford do his perfect, um, you you know, there's so much be- hiding behind those beautiful eyes of his, and you want to see the depth of his character. Uh, you know, th- that's there. If you're looking for something visually intriguing and interesting, maybe this one's for you. Cons. Story doesn't drag me in. It just doesn't keep me there. Again, I three quarter robbed it. Look at the website if you want to know what robbing a movie is. But that's what I say, Adam. Can you give me your pros and cons? Yeah, I mean that's tough. I think pros. I would say that yeah, the great cast and a great concept, and it's kind of cool to think about things differently. Right. This movie makes you think about life differently a little bit. Sure. But the cons is it doesn't follow through on its initial promise. Mm. So it's a big letdown. Yeah, disappointed so, as you said. So you know, kind of, it's it's an eye opener, but it lets you down. That'd be my pros and cons. I got you, Patrick. You got pros and cons uh, rattling around that head of yours. Yeah. So the con is you're not gonna get really a comedy. You're not really gonna get a huge romance, and you're not really gonna get a big mind bender. Right. But the pro is I get to podcast about the movie, okay. so I'm There's okay a, with that. There's a redeeming factor. Yeah, there. that's a good point. It really doesn't hit any of the main. The Pillars. Pillars, yeah. Besides the wheelhouse. It was in the wheelhouse. It was in the wheelhouse. Season two Pillars. You gotta give me that. Do we restart the Pillars? Yeah, well, we have to rebuild. We, we round re- up. We must rebuild. We gotta build okay. a new building. All right, we Pillar the foundation. One. Pillar one. I'm gonna go ahead and start us off with a rewatch and recommend. I'm going to do neither. I, uh, I just, I'm not interested. I wasn't interested in the initial viewing. I'm not gonna rewatch it, and I really... Don't want to suggest it. Yep, same. Stay away from this one. Don't watch it. I wouldn't rewatch it. It gives you. It promises a lot. It's fool's gold. Fool's gold. Sorry, I don't no, know why. you went Matthew McConaughey. For <laughs> I did. I don't know. I'm sorry. I well, the movie, <laughs> the movie gold. The movie yeah. gold. Matthew. Fool's gold, though. It's, it promises a lot, all but right, delivers all nothing. Right, all right. <laughs> I got well, dog to find my dog. Down by. All right, Dave. <laughs> Thanks for kicking that over to me. I'm gonna kick it over to Patrick now. That's all right. <laughs> Nicely done. Yeah, this this movie it doesn't have a rewind. It doesn't have a recommend. Right. But if you're interested in the concept, go watch like Other Life, another movie we reviewed. I think that movie was a little bit better than yeah this. And it, oh, for it, sure, it toys a little bit. Is on that the, the same one plan. where it was it was a society defying as well? The uh, yes. drops yes, and the yes, nanobots. Yes. Good, good, good. That was a good one. Yep. Yeah, that's our that's our suggestion there. Don't watch this. Watch that. I thought this would be more like that, to be honest. Yeah. I don't know. And the thing is, it, you said disappointed already, Adam, and I agree with you. Robert Redford, Jason Siegel got a couple big players throughout, and they're good actors. Even the um, supporting roles, they're yeah. great. Disappointed. Right. It's it, Why 25 days? Did the writing take you only 25 days? Did you not think this... I don't know. It's just it's disappointing. That's you would think way. it'd be like other life with a better cast. And you think Robert Redford, you're going to hop on board with his role? Jason Siegel, even like, who, does he owe money somewhere or what? Well, well be, that being said, uh, Robert Redford's parts I feel were more tailored to him. When I see Jason, I'm thinking more of like comedy than anything. Right. Yeah. So like, I don't know why he did this drama. It's like it was um, confusing. I was on board though. I was ready to go down the rabbit hole of Jason Siegel dramas. You know, mm-hmm. to see how this would go. I was I was ready to give him the fair shake. I thought he did fine. It well, just... I mean, think about Jason Siegel for getting Sarah Marshall. He was not a hilarious slapstick cracking jokes every five minutes. Right. He does a drama character well. I mean, even Freaks and Geeks back a thousand years ago, he was a perfectly fine drama, you know, drama actor. So. Right, right. Anyway, we got to bring down Liga Storial if we uh, if we could. Adam, looking at you. Yeah, I wrote down, this is like when someone's like, hey, you want a double vodka, and it tastes like candy. 
I'd be like, ooh, ooh yeah, that sounds good. I'll try that. And then you try it, and it just tastes like vodka. Ah, and you're like, they oh, forgot the candy. I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> I'll just drink it, though. <laughs> Thanks. Just you what you did. You kind of promised me a full, like, a, like a, you kind of sold me on this. Yeah. And now you gave me shit. <laughs> but I'm here, so. <laughs> Patrick, bring us on a liquor store aisle, man. Yeah, I gave this a uh, a big glass of tea, but you didn't get honey with it. You didn't get the water with it, and you didn't get any tea leaves with it. It's just like staring into an empty cup because it's empty. It wasn't there. It wasn't there. It. No. Yeah, I'm going with a. Um, this is a this is a friend's beer. Hey man, I'm brewing my own beer. I, I'm getting all these things together, like Robert Redford ingredients and Jason Siegel ingredients. Man, I'm interested. But like your buddy doesn't let it ferment and let it get good and <laughs> it's just all the ingredients just poured into a glass and it's like dude you can't just eat yeast like this this is not how you make beer <laughs> nice and so, <laughs> it was so like let downy yeah, drink right. the beers oh, <laughs> these are so depressing <laughs> but maybe we can pull one out of the fire here next one up hold nine yards this is a 2000 film kind of winding back the clock uh, a struggling dentist's life is turned upside down when a famous gangster moves in next door and his wife convinces him to inform a notorious mob boss about the gangster's whereabouts. 6.7 IMDb. Adam Roller Trailer. I see you pushing the play button over there. I was ready. I was standing by. Hmm. Matthew Perry. Chandler. Can yes. Bruce Willis. Featuring two thousands right. audio mixing. Yeah, this sounds like VHS. <laughs> Call me us. Jimmy, Jimmy Jones. Have we met before? No. I remember. I got a thing with faces. So what was his name? Timmy the Tulip. I'm sure. Jimmy. Timmy the Tulip. Jimmy. Jimmy. Right. Jimmy the Tulip. Yes. You look like you got some gas. That's Jimmy the Tulip Tedeschi. Jimmy the Tulip was a hitman. Nice, Patrick. <laughs> Selfie, the man's killed seventeen people. Let's go for a drive. A drive? Look, Jimmy, I certainly don't want to die. You better get used to it because you're going to. What? Everybody dies. <laughs> Sooner or later. Jimmy Tedeschi's <laughs> new friends are hitting on oh. him. I'm yeah, Amanda Pete. Yeah. yeah, well, this, this voice is great. Kid. She has definite potential. What? I've been wanting to meet you for years. <laughs> but one of them <laughs> is hitting a little too coming. close <laughs> to home. <laughs> what got into him? Hello. This is Cynthia. Yemi's vibe. Oz, we're friends. Friends do not engage in sexual congress with each other's wives. <laughs> <laughs> Have you vomited recently? A minute ago. I was just going to brush my teeth. I'll wait. Okay. <laughs> That's when things started right to go it. wrong. This is one exceedingly <laughs> sweet man. I can't think of nothing finer than a fine naked woman holding a gun. Bruce Willis. It's not important how many people I've killed. I hope that What's guy's a billionaire. How I get along with the people that are still the, alive. The audio guy. The voice of oh. Matthew Perry. He's a little Matthew upset. Perry. I've managed to upset a mass murderer. Oh. Aren't you going to cry out for help? Would it do any good? No. Time to rock and roll. In their world. They're going to kill you. What? Being yourself. Nobody move. Could get you killed. The whole nine yards. The whole nine yards. <laughs> Bruce Willis grabs a fly out of midair, eats the fly, spits the fly out, thus proving his uh, outstanding uh, killing abilities, I suppose. <laughs> 6.7 IMDb. This is a comedy crime. 98 minutes. That's wheelhouse. 43 million bucks. I got some notes here. Adam, you want to roll through the notes or you want me to read them? You go ahead. I gotcha. The owner of the two houses that were used for this movie paid were paid fifty thousand dollars on the condition that they left the houses they left their houses for a month. Oh, okay, that makes sense. That's not bad. Fifty grand wow. to leave your house for a month? Yeah. I'd take that deal. And it's probably cheaper than building a set, you know, mm -hmm. in Hollywood somewhere. Uh, the house used for filming was infested with flies, so it took so it was nearly impossible to prevent them from appearing in several scenes, which I just mentioned. Pretty interesting. I didn't know that was. Why. I, I was wondering what was up with the fly. There was I a couple. That was a bad joke. Yeah, but it was a little inside joke for the movie. Yeah, throughout the movie, a few times the main characters are uh, interrupted by flies or whatever. Hijinks ensue. The shot of Jill, Amanda Pete, twisting her ankle was not scripted. 
Director Jonathan Lynn liked the take, so he put it in the film. <laughs> oh, that's pretty interesting. Whole nine yards, Patrick. What would you think about this one, man? I definitely like this. I've okay. seen it before this uh, cast. I know they have a sequel, the whole ten yards, which I really liked. Oh, I never saw that. Okay. Yeah, this this is um, this is a good movie, and it has a lot of like. Uh, snappy witty comments it's got some little slapstick in it they tried to bring the 90s into the 2000s oh, yeah. it was, it, i think it worked with well this they one. shot they probably shot it in 99 so you could still have some of that 90s mm-hmm. but yeah but i mean you're right at the turn of the century you know you got right. the y2k bug coming around the corner everyone so. wants to be goofy yeah yeah it had that i definitely agree with you it's definitely uh definitely really silly mm-hmm. and even with that trailer with that dude's voice just made it just put it right in its place mm-hmm. adam what'd you think about this one i liked it I liked it a lot. I thought it was, uh, it it took a twist towards the end, you know, because uh, when I first picked this movie, I saw that I was looking at movies like great twist endings. So I was in a twist ending movie phase, and this movie popped up, and I was like, oh, you know, I've heard of that movie. It's been around. I just never watched it. So sure. I wanted to put it on the docket just to to check it out, and it yeah. was it was really good. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, great cast. Matthew Perry, man, I wish he was in more stuff. I haven't like, seen him around. Has anybody got an IMDb of him? I thought he would... Uh, I think he's fallen off the face well, since he's, Friends. He's been making huge dollars from Friends still to this day. He's still getting a check. Well, they all are. <laughs> sure. So why would you go back? I'd just sit in the Hollywood Hills and... Right, but I, I wish he did more movies. I yeah, he's like, good. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. Well, it, is he is he good or is he good for the 90s? Because... I don't know what movie you'd put him in. Well, here's the thing, and I, I really, in the past, you guys know this, I do not like the goofy guy put in these situations where he has to make the right decisions and get himself out. Like, that's a certain type of movie. It's not the awkward, the, the murderers coming around the corner. It's the guy who, you know, you could have solved this by doing this right away and the movie would be over in five minutes, but Dale, you know, it's a movie, so you got to watch it. I hate that type of character. So he's a perfectly fine person in his movie life, but decides to make these decisions that lead him to X, Y, Z, which make a whole movie out of it. So it that frustrates me. Well, but he does it so well. You, you think the, you think Matthew Perry put himself in those situations, or I think he made choices to you know to that led him throughout the movie. I mean, if I gave you a mantle free pass right now, can you name one decision that he did? Listen to his wife. He marrying his wife? No, listening to her and 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 uh, taking her initial advice early in the movie. Well, he didn't really take her advice. I mean, he was kind of like he's kind of giving an ultimatum. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And okay, he, well, and, still, I don't think I would have made that choice. But either way, I see what you're saying. But anyway, it's a it's a dope. It's not, he's not making dumb choices for dumb <laughs> choices' sake. You know, I think they set. I think why you like him and why you like the movie was he set up. To, yeah, you got a choice. You got an ultimatum. You go this way or you go this way. X happens, X happens. Right. You know, it's not just like, oh, I'm going to do this just because it's right. a movie. Yeah. I'm stupid. not Mr. Magoo. Yeah. Right. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, okay. So he's placed on a path, and now we have to watch how this 90s person has to deal with this problem. Right. Okay. That valid. I will say that. And that's probably why I stuck around and really enjoyed the film, because it, it even though he was like that, supported by... Uh, Bruce Willis, great. Amanda Peet, fantastic. They saved the movie, I think, uh, halfway through uh, when those characters really get rolling. Great. Big dynamic change, just like out oh. of left field. And it definitely made me more involved. Mm-hmm. Um, right. The uh, Who's the big black guy, actually, who recently passed away? Yeah. Um, I you, can't remember his name, but great job. Yeah, he was in uh, the original Daredevil movie with um, Ben Affleck. Okay. And I remember him. <laughs> he like, was also was in his... Armageddon with Ben Affleck. Yeah. Ah. So. So he's a buddy. Um, uh, not Kevin Costner. Who am I thinking of? Bruce Willis. No, who's the... Uh, Kevin Pollack. He did a great job, too. Um, everybody rock and rolling. Really, the cast was di- d- dynamite. Uh, super fun film. Adam, what would you like about this one? Fun? Did you think it f- was it fun? Was it silly? Was it silly I wrote flag? down a fun flick. Fun it's flag. a fun flick. Okay. It kind of starts off kind of Tarantino-esque. Sure. But it ends kind of like a Hallmark movie. Yeah. <laughs> if I cannot give too much away. I can see that. But it kind of takes a twist towards the end that it's a little more feel good. Yeah. A little more chick flicky. Sure. Than how the movie starts off. Very easy, easy comedy. And I thought it was an... 
I saw the transition. I felt I was there with the transition happened. And I was like, okay. It still worked. It still works with the theme of the movie. Right. And, you know, they hit, they, they, they hit the balance right. It was yeah. a very interesting in that take. For being such a, like, uh, lighthearted, you know, uh, your Hallmark style movie, it had just a pleasant twist to make it um, a little more rough edged than you thought you were getting into, if I'm just dancing like crazy. But you are it, dancing. It, it, it really, I loved how that felt. Right after uh, Bruce Willis moves in, it really sets the tone for his character when they like they go on that car ride. Yeah. And you're like, okay, this could go either way now. Right. And then the movie keeps evolving, and it's it's not going where you think, but it's not like an unpleasant where you don't. So it's it's there's a real nice balance. Sure. It's, yeah. It yeah. walked the line very well. Yeah. I guess that's what we're trying to say. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah. it, was, it was cool to watch. It's an old classic. I'm surprised I missed it. Did you guys watch this one in the 2000s? No. Oh, you did now at first time viewing? I, w- I missed it too. Okay. So you I remember watching it um I don't know if it was my father or was somebody from school but like we went to what was it like family video or whatever it was yeah. and it was recently released. So. Oh, okay, that puts yeah. a little time stamp on it. Uh okay, so I thought it was really fun. I mean, what do I got written down here? What else do I got? Yeah, Amanda Pete and Bruce Willis's uh dynamic together was I thought the jewel of the movie. I I I was Delightfully entertained. Riveted. Uh, riveted. Uh, um, I don't know. What else do I got? Uh, Patrick, anything else to add? I mean, do, let's let's keep on this pros and cons thing. Sell it to me or turn me away. I want, oh. bo- I want both things. Pros and cons. All right. Well, pros, you got Bruce Willis playing a hitman. So that's pretty fun. And he plays that classic laid back, like, uh, almost... Um, I don't know. He's just, I could kill you, yeah. but I don't want to yeah, because he's, he's you make such, me happy. So he's just I won't. super blasé. Yeah. I love when he plays those type of characters because he does it quite a bit. Where he's just this is a serious situation, but I'm just cool. I'm cool and I'm funny and I'm out of it. Yeah. So anyway, okay, I see what you're saying there. Bruce Willis, great. Yeah, if I had to give it a con, I'd say it kind of stalls out towards the end. But I mean, when it hits like that chick flicky aspect, I'm like, uh, uh, can we go yeah. back? But I mean, right. it's not. Over the top, where like I'm turning the movie off. I'm still watching it, right? But I mean that that'd be the only real like drawback for me is when it takes that little dive, like the the, uh, the Disney Channel movie dive for a second. Yeah, where you gotta I get, know like, exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it's so, like Bambi's mom dies, but then you get right back into Bambi being a cute little deer. Right. Adam, can you pros and cons? Can you sell it or kill it? Yeah, I'll just sell it. Um, I liked it a lot. Great cast. Like you already hit, touched on Bruce Willis and Amanda Pete. I don't know. Amanda Pete should be in more stuff. I think Matthew Perry could have been in more stuff. Yeah. I don't know if he could now, but back then, sure. I'm, I'm like, you, you were really good in this. You know, good for you, Matthew Perry. Yeah. Way to, way to, <laughs> way to step up, be kind of Chandler esque, but make a little yeah. pivot into this new movie. Yeah. You know, and it just, I liked, I liked the overall trajectory of the movie. It took some nice, pleasant twists. Kept you guessing. Right. Um, yeah, it was just a fun flick. It was fun to watch. Because it, it was, I mean, what do we got? It's comedy crime, but it is, it's not a mystery, I wouldn't say. But yeah, like you said, there's pleasant twists. Right. No, But no cons, though. You have zero cons. Nothing dragged it down. This was the best movie. There's nothing bad about it. I mean, it's not a masterpiece. Okay. I guess well, that's well, the only con. But I, I mean, say, how, but... How, can, you, can you get any deeper or no? On why it's not a masterpiece? What well, made I'll just it? say, like, it, it's, it sets out to be a fun movie. And that's what it is. And, you know, it's not going to be like, oh, the best picture of the year. Sure. Oh, heavens, the <laughs> artist. <laughs> You're going into the old. Uh, <laughs> the artist really spoke to the character of the humans and the plight of the humans in this movie. <laughs> Excellent work. Well done, Cheerio. Matthew Perry. Matthew Perry is a god among men. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, that is not going to... Right, that, My con is it's not one of those. It but. did what it set out to do. <laughs> right. I gotcha. Yeah, pros for this one. Yeah, again, we we talked about great cast. It's funny. It's really lighthearted, which is sometimes a great... It's it's always a great time to watch lighthearted. Sometimes you want those deep movies, but sometimes you just want something you can watch in it. It it ends how it ends. <laughs> yeah, hey. yeah. Uh, but right. then a cons, I would say, I think Matthew Perry's a little too nineties over the top. He 
is a goofy character the whole time. Which that is true. I there think, was one part where he's trying to sit on some tires that are. It's like, come on. Yeah. I right. mean, yeah, I understand you want to be the lighthearted. It was, uh, it, that was one Matthew Perry step too far. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you took a Matthew Perry size step into the unfunny. But anyway, uh, we get to bring it to the liquor store aisle. If, oh, no, rewatch, recommend. Adam. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll rewatch it and I'll recommend it. Yep. Patrick, rewatch, recommend. Yeah, I think this is one of those movies where if you've seen it, you're probably going to watch it again at some point. Like, right. it's, if it's on, you'll watch it. If you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend it. It's mm. a very uh, short, wheelhousey comedy, so yeah. I can't see why you wouldn't like it. Same boat. If somebody had it on, I wouldn't turn it off. And if somebody wants to watch it, please do. Liquor store aisle, Patrick, and to flip it back your way. What do you got for this one? Just a scotch and soda, like they ah, were drinking throughout the movie. Indeed. I loved it. Yeah. And scotch and soda's good, so. There you go. Adam, what do you got? I gave it a little bat blue. Okay. <laughs> Takes place in Canada. Ah. Underrated beer. Yeah, you're right. And you've, you've Underrated said, flick. You've used that before in the podcast. You're really pushing your Labatt uh, agenda. <laughs> I am very consistent <laughs> on my feelings towards Labatt. Blue. And I will give you that. Um, I have uh, the Killian's Irish Red, Ooh. which is a good beer. And you know what? I don't have it that often. Because I, Guinness is better. No, I wouldn't Killian's say Killian's Irish Red was the first beer I ever had. Really? Yes. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, Fun I, fact. It's good. It's. It, I mean, it's a good beer, but I don't. I don't. I'm not going out to buy it. I'm not going out to drink it. I'm not excited to. Hey, <laughs> I'm getting a sixer. Of Killian's Irish Red. It's not. So this you movie. Be excited. Well, yeah. Now I. Now I'll know. So now this movie is like, man, I didn't know I would actually enjoy this movie as much as I did. I for, forgot movies like this exist, and I forgot Irish Killian's Irish Red exists. Yep, the time. 90s happened. <laughs> I wasn't, Surprise. I wasn't there for most of them, if you know what I mean. Uh, I was a hammered eight-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, another 2017. Bringing it right back. Captain Jack Sparrow searches for the trident of Poseidon while being pursued by an undead sea captain and his crew. 6.7 IMDb is an action adventure fantasy. Patrick, I was doing some little bit of research. Is this the lowest rated Pirates of the Caribbean? I think it was. I don't know if you did any of that. No, I think on Stranger Tides was like half a point lower. I see, okay. I, I want to say that. I just know that how they... Uh, Almost it's a linear drop in IMDb as the more uh, Pirates came out. Anyway. All right. Let's roll I, the trailer. I know this is- Save it for the cast. Save it for the cast. Save, save it for the segment. <laughs> save for the segment of the cast. <laughs> yo, ho, yo, ho. The Pirates life for me. Nice. That was actually not the trailer. That was me. Oh, I, I was surprised. One of your hosts. Out of color. Pirates come from the depths. You know it's gonna hit the fan. Got the red coats on a ship, some fog, some fire, some death. Yeah, so what do we got going on here? Death, fire, the usual. Antonio. Banderas. <laughs> that's not it. Bandirari. <laughs> oh, that, that's old culture for an old men guy. Yeah. Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow. He kept calling him Jack the Sparrow, which frustrated yeah. me. But I know why he did it, but it frustrated me. Find Sparrow for me. And relay a message from Capitan Salazar. That right there is why it sucked. Yeah. Would you, say that, would you say that to him for me, please? Save it for please? the... Please? Save it for the segment. I like what you're going on. <laughs> save it. Pirates of the Caribbean. Dead bird tell no tales. Sure don't. That's the truth. Uh... 
Let's go through our notes here, if we could. Action, adventure, fantasy, 129 minutes, just way out of the wheelhouse. Way. $230 million. To make. Wow. But it made almost eight hundred million Globally. That's pretty wild. Right. Uh, at two hours and nine minutes long, this has been the shortest running time of all the Pirates of the Caribbean films. In an interview, Orlando Bloom said this movie would be a soft reboot of the previous installments. Interesting. Um, composer Hans Zimmer. Now, Patrick, you put this in, I'm guessing, 24, 28? Very good. 24. 24 Size font. 24. Everything else is in size 11. This one. Ooh, 11. I like where your head's Way at. Way to tell font there, Dale. Thank can, you. Can you tell what that bullet fit. point is, too? No, no. It's also 24. Okay. <laughs> the black dot. Uh, composer, composer Hans Zimmer, who composed the previous films in the franchise, didn't compose this film so he could compose... For Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk in 2017, Dunkirk is highlighted and has been changed to red. <laughs> We're getting the color printer all warmed up here. Uh, Johnny Depp injured his hand while filming in Australia and had to make a trip back to the U.S. Uh, this will be the second film in the series to be shot digitally. The first one was Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. That was in 2011. And that was the last one. Oh, that was the... They haven't had one since 2011. Yeah, so this was the six-year gap between that one and this one. And people had to wait. Big fans had to wait six years for this one. All four of them, yeah. <laughs> Zing pow. Uh <laughs> Nice work. Adam, docket master, talk to me, man. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, are you, know, you first, first things first, have you seen the rest of the Pirates of the Caribbean uh, saga? I saw the first three. How many are there? This will be the, this is the sixth? This is number five. This is number five. Okay, so I've you seen have seen one, two, three. Haven't seen four. Just watch five because of disdain for the series. No, I really like the series. Okay. I really like number one. I really like number two. Number three was kind of meh, and then just like how most trilogies go, I guess. Sure. And then I didn't watch four because I was like, I don't, I, I don't think they got it together. And then uh, we watched five for the podcast. So then I watched five. You're back, and I was very disappointed. To, okay, to say the least. Double disappointed. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was not a good movie. Okay, they completely lost track of where they were with Pirates One. Yeah, so it's it's very disappointing to see how far this franchise has fallen. I'm going to come back to that. And I want to talk about that, uh, Patrick. Uh, past Pirates Watcher. Yeah. Past Pirates Preview Pursuer. Is it you watched the uh, last yeah, four? Yeah, I've seen them all. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to fit a little bit of linguistic funniness in there. But you can't force funny. You can't force weird. That's what I always say. Yep. <laughs> so how did this one stack up? The, this one was better than four, but, I mean, it's the second worst one or the fourth best one, however you want to look at it. Okay. It's not like um, the other ones where they had that real well-balanced Jack Sparrow and then drama, and then it comes back like in one and two, and then, like Adam was saying, they lost their way in three, four, five. So it became something bigger than what Johnny Depp could make Jack Sparrow in. Right. So he had to continuously outdo himself, and like even with the opening scene with uh, Johnny Depp, it's just like yeah. this is so insanely over the top for what this character could do and would do. Right. It's just like, it's it's it not believable anymore. It doesn't line up with this past uh, persona, maybe. Correct. I didn't want, I saw Pirates of the Caribbean 1. I have not seen any installments up to now. Can this one stand alone by itself as a viewing? Do you need to know anything about the past? Obviously, Orlando Bloom, uh, you need to know his backstory, or do you not? Yeah, so like, Orlando Bloom, his son is sort of, um, teamed up with uh, Johnny Depp in this movie sure. and then some other things happen but to really understand how they're getting from point A to point B outside of like um, it's like watching Guardians of the Galaxy 1 or okay. watching 2 without two. watching 1 sure. it's like you could still enjoy it but there's underlying themes that you might miss with right. 2 without right. watching 1 so it's it, yeah, you can watch it on itself, but I mean, you're going to get more out of it if you invest the other eight hours into one yeah. through four. I think uh, I think uh, Johnny Depp really phoned this one in. I mean, mm. it, it, he was totally sloppy. Didn't uh, he, I remember watching uh, Pirates One, and I thought he was just the man. Everything he was doing, and he was being witty, and he was being quick, and he was being choppy, and he was being you know a crazy person and just getting out of all these things this one he was just 
All right, do we need to have Johnny Depp in this movie too? Yeah, we kind of do. He's kind of a big drawing point to the crowd. Really? Okay, we'll write him apart, I suppose. He really had nothing. Nothing he brought into the story was uh, necessary. I mean, maybe one part towards the end, maybe. But other than that, it was kind of... Uh, it was like a Johnny Depp, like, see what he's doing. See if we can get him on mm-hmm. set for 25 days. Yeah, he is. He totally phoned it in. He doesn't have it anymore in terms of playing Jack Sparrow. Ooh. That's that's completely gone. I so. just think that silliness and randomness is overused. Again, mm-hmm. it's like it's mm-hmm. like we like Adam said, like every trilogy. And this now has gone too beyond a trilogy. You watch Pirates 1, dude, you are captivated by everything sure. Johnny, that, John, that Jack, Captain Jack Sparrow has to say. Sure. You want to know exactly what he's doing, how he's going to get out of this, what his plans are. Right. In this one, he's just like a bumbling idiot yeah. that like, you yeah. kind of don't really care about. And he's just hammered the entire time. Yeah. And like it's like it has to be, that's his funny stick, shtick. Yeah, in like, every like scene, he's, like he's drunk. Like that's isn't that's that funny? his that's his thing. Hey, it's funny, right? Well, I want to see you get out of something really fun and exciting. No, I'm just gonna bumble around drunk. It's like, okay, that's what your character now is kind of melted down to. You know, yeah. I don't know. It's 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 uh, it, you know, I watched it again. I watched it originally for the cast here, and then I had it on kind of background vac act style well, when my wife was watching. Yeah, and she's like, oh, is this the first one? And I said, no, this will be like the fifth or later in the series. She's like, oh, it's bound to be bad. I said, why is that? She's like, well, it's, you know, it's way it's way late in the series. It's going to be bad. I mean, she understood um, uh, who is the – what's the what's the main bad guy's character? What's his actor name? What's his real life name? Anybody, any idea? He was, no I country. thought it was Antonio No, it wasn't Bandonio. Antonio ba- Banderas. It was uh, – <laughs> Let me consult. Consult a book of knowledge. He was uh, in Old Country for – no no country for old men old country for young men um <laughs> and dude he was dynamite and mm-hmm. they were talking about two like this was shot digitally Javier you, Bardem yeah he was uh Javier was a basically a a ghost zombie thing for the majority of the movie ghost and pirate so, ghost pirate so he was really digitally done on my second viewing, I was struck by how great... I mean, usually I hate CG. It's mm-hmm. over the top. They haven't perfected it, and I don't think they ever will make it look that great unless it's Ex Machina. That was really good. Um, uh, but he was, he was visually striking with how he looked like he was underwater all the time, but he was not underwater. Like his hair. Oh, that was yeah. super cool yeah. and super detailed. looked great. And that's what digital really can pull out if you don't like that depth of film and that warmth digitally shot makes it look really crisp so i thought it visually it it uh maintained so yeah it did have like huge set pieces where like the like there's full-scale pirate battles going back were the and boats forth. real yeah. or like I, some, some of, the of them boats? some of them had to be real because i know there was one scene where it did like that sw- not s- swing camera it's um a jib? zip line or oh, whatever okay. like it comes in you could clearly tell like that front boat is real and there's and, like actual real fire on it yeah but then as it gets past that you could tell antonio banderas is movie or, <laughs> yeah right about 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 Javier, blah, 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 is his boat's not real so <laughs> right yeah well it's a it's a ghost ship so it's tough to film those you know in the in translucent this. you gotta put like a sheet of paper behind it just to, <laughs> <laughs> adam uh i mean what what do we got to talk about this one i mean dude it sucked i'll just be honest you're you're dude. disappointed it sucked, man. What Javier broke your heart? Bardem could have been such a cool bad guy. You, what, okay, so you think he failed at being a cool bad guy? Because we well, said I think we the, stopped. I think, I think the writing failed him. I don't think he ah, failed. I got you. I think that he sets up. I want to kill Jack Sparrow. And like, again, I'm this, like, oh yeah, he's a ghost guy, and he constantly has blood dripping out of his mouth while he speaks, and he kind of like spits it up, like his mouth is full of this. Yeah, but it, it never really, it could have been re- sludge. It could have been really cool, like Jack Sparrow, the ultimate pirate, first one of his eldest enemies back from the dead to take him on. Like that could have been like a cool. Yeah, let's do it. That backstory is epic with how he sent him to the right. ghostly pirate realm. Right, and that's how he became Jack Sparrow. Sure, and all that, that. it was like, the origins of Jack Sparrow. Awesome yeah. throwback. You had all. You could have crushed this. You didn't need. 
uh, well, the chick astronomer, I liked her idea. I wish they played to her astronomy knowledge more. Yes, that's true. Instead of just focusing As on her a looks. As a resident space expert yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I wish they kind of played her up more. Will, Tur- Will Turner's son, forgettable. Yeah. Garbage. I don't even, he, yeah. the movie didn't even need him. Yeah, don't even need him. You could have just threw him away. Yeah. Uh, all the old characters, you really didn't need those guys back. It was kind of a lame twist at the end that you saw coming. Uh, to try to make tr- you're trying to build something up that oh you didn't need to build up. Yeah. yeah, like that was it was just a waste. Right. Convoluted plot lines. The yeah. first Pirates of the Caribbean movie was awesome because you implied pirate curses from that time. Even though there's a fatal flaw in Pirates One, and if anyone drops me a line, uh, can you go through it right now? Or, or there's a f- I, well, I want us, I want our listeners to see. Well, okay. Anyway, are you doing like an overall what's wrong with pirates? No, Pirates Caribbean number 1, there is a fatal flaw in the movie relative to the plot. What do our listeners get? If anybody can tell me what that fatal flaw is, yeah, you will get a bottle of your choice. Ah. Courtesy of the Netflix Explorers. There you go. Under $50. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be it's got to yeah. be bottom shelf. So, besides that, Pirates 1's awesome cuz you got curses, you got action, you got love interests. You got yeah. Giant Depp acting awesome. Right. Great stuff. Yeah. In this movie, they just don't replicate it. Like, oh, the curse, we're going to go with Poseidon's trident. Like, dude, that's not even pirate's curse. That's freaking Greek mythology. Like, Davy Jones is cool. Like, yeah. I, people don't like pirates, too. I love pirates, too. Davy Jones was an awesome bad guy. Yeah. Like, that whole concept of Davy Jones coming up with his whole fleet of the dead, that was that was sick. They were all, was, all bones? Was they that were all, the like, one? fish creatures. Oh, I didn't see that one. I was totally on board with Davy Jones. Okay. Um, but, like, Poseidon's trident, and, like, yeah. I even liked the bad guy in this movie, but he didn't... Yeah. He didn't, he didn't. He didn't get written a good role. Yeah, and it played, and also it had. There was a little point in there where I thought was really cool. Uh, they show Johnny Depp, Jack Sparrow, and the Spanish. He was like a uh, a naval uh, captain or whatever. That's the. That's like who the main bad guy is. Okay, so they show the actual. I've said this twice. The origins of Jack Sparrow when he takes when he's in the Black Pearl and he goes he, he's like, "What is this?" And he's like, "Well, this is a uh, tribute." And he starts handing all the little things that Jack Sparrow wears, like as his little yeah, that was cool. And he starts handing him like the beads that he always wears and the jacket and the hat. And they start his crew gives him tribute, and like I'm like, this is a. He- why are you passing this by in under two minutes? This origin story should be a movie. Yeah. And then the whole thing is like, look how great of a pirate he was. And now look how crappy and drunk he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, dude, why? Why did you make him crappy and drunk? Mm. Like, make him awesome. Like how we want him to be. Yeah. You have all these, you have all, you have the reasons to bolster this character up and you're not utilizing them. Well, I, I think it's, you know, because they're rebooting Star Wars right now. We have episode seven and eight out. We got nine coming. And there's certain paths that they have to take to separate themselves from the old movies. So they're trying to make their own thing. So I'm going to write it down here. I think either Jack Sparrow is going to die in the next one. Okay. Or he's just not going to be in it. He's going to be like some line will just he'll be off because I don't think he's towards got... the end of the movie. Uh, I'm not going to spoil anything. It could they could they leave the possibility to eliminate the character available in the last scene of the movie for Jack Sparrow his old thing at the end of this movie. Okay, spoiler ready. He could he could never reappear, and this would have shot finished his character perfectly. But I'm not saying how. But that that's how almost every movie ends with with these franchises, yeah, right? So, and he's always back. Okay. Oh, so. I didn't know that. Oh, okay. Okay. What? Well, either way, I just think that he, that how that movie ended is probably how his three sh- or four of them. Oh, ended. I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's I got you. Okay. Well, then forget that. Um, anything more to add, guys? What can we? Let's go into pros and cons. Adam, you have to give me a pro, and then give me as many cons as you want. Give me a pro. Give me a con. Pro, it's still Pirates of the Caribbean. It's still great pirate action. It's still a lot of fighting. It's still entertaining. You're still entertained by it just because there's some... 
like he there's one scene where he like wraps a rope around a shark and it pulls his boat yeah it's like it's cool yeah like it's just it's classic pirates action then you got the dun 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 damn it dun 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 like like yeah and that's gonna get anybody jack let's go johnny depp like you know that's that's just gonna you like that if you don't like that something's wrong with you right all right so you got that but the pecans everything we've already talked about horrible writing horrible characters you didn't even need half of them. Yeah. Like, I don't need Will Turner's son to tell Johnny Depp to be a better person. I don't need that. <laughs> yeah, we're Who all... Who needs that? We're Who's all... clamoring for that? <laughs> like, so... It's right. just a movie. Waste. We get it. He's got to be better. Okay, <laughs> right. moving yeah. on. Dave, Barbarossa? I, I forgot he even existed. <laughs> why is he even in this movie? Like... Well, you see why. All right, whatever. Uh, all right, Patrick. Patrick, give me pros, give me cons. Pro, Adam said it. The theme song. Yeah. Um, um, it's beautiful. Great soundtrack. Great going. music throughout. Let's yeah. be honest. I'd say um, it's really cool to look at as long as you're not thinking too hard about it. Sure. Uh, Great back act. Yeah. And I'd say cons, it's not well scripted. Yeah. Um, It's going to upset you compared to what Pirates used to be. But, I mean, that's that's still Johnny Depp being Jack Sparrow-ish. Yeah. Uh, My pros, yeah, visually gorgeous. Yeah. it was it was a fun watch, and again, I will say I rewatched it again, kind of over my wife's shoulder, and it almost was more intriguing when I wasn't paying attention to it, which kind of <laughs> tells a little bit something about the tale. So that's the pro, and I think that's also the con. If you go into it expecting like, "Hey, man, Pirates of the Caribbean, huge dollar series, can't wait to get what's going on," and you bring all this weight, as Adam was disappointed. So that's yeah. what I mean. That's my con. Yeah. Also, for how long this movie is, not much happened. No. So, no, like, no, you could really break it down well, into it's almost a writing three thing. scenes. It's yeah. a writing thing, as you said. Yeah. So. Uh, we got to bring it down to Liga's trial, though. No, we got to do rewatch recommend. Adam, rewatch, rec, omend. No. No and no. No. Watch Patrick, the first one. Rewatch, I, recommend. I won't rewatch it, but when they announce Pirate 6, I might recommend somebody has to watch this only to continue. Get a little back. But story. that's the only reason why. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I don't need to rewatch this one. Um, again, I already did it twice. That's plenty. Uh, <laughs> recommend if you're a fanboy of the series you got to stay with it because you're not going to break those people's hearts uh if you're just dying for the next one go ahead and watch it but if you're watching it on netflix you already saw it in theaters oh, so you know the recommend is meh there uh but let's bring it down leaks to <laughs> that's actually what i have written down rewatch <laughs> meh recommend <laughs> <laughs> and to bring us down to leaks to what can you compare this one to so i came with this drink review and i can't remember if you were there with me or not rusty okay but tell i'll tell the story you tell me if you draw some memory do tell all right so um, uh, if we in- had enough of them i wouldn't remember <laughs> <laughs> so down in florida uh, my parents had a place where we have a little cart room. There's a little, a little garage where everyone p- parks their golf carts, right? And there's like a little cage in between all the golf carts that separates both sides of the garage. So we pulled in the gr- with the, our golf cart in the garage. I saw this bottle of Sailor, Sailor Jerry sitting on the guy's shelf. I was there. You were there on the <laughs> other side. So we were like, dude, we want to get that Sailor Jerry. <laughs> So I think Dale climbed up over the oh, fence. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it was either me or Dale climbed up over the fence to the other guy's cart room, grabbed the bottle of rum, brought it over the top and into our. And we had the rum. We stole this guy's rum. Yeah, we're we like, had the rum. We're like, yeah, and we're like sixteen, seventeen. <laughs> we're like, we're basically Jack Sparrow. In this we're basically Jack Sparrow. <laughs> dun, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm sitting there like Dale's climbing the wall in my head. I'm like, dun 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 dun, <laughs> and I'm like, so he gets the rum. We go down. We drink like fiends. And it was awesome. But now someone's like, hey, you want to say, oh, Jerry? I'm like, you will never live up to what me and Dale lived through. <laughs> so just keep your drink. Yeah. Wow. Again, you hate when I congratulate you on a great drink. <laughs> but, but this was no, a fantastic. No, I love when you congratulate me. I just don't like how you're always so surprised. When oh, you know my <laughs> oh, my God. Adam, how did you did you think of that? No, that was, that was a great one. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, you could tell with the... Uh, you, You'll never, yeah, you'll never know, man. Yeah. You weren't there for the first I'm glad. Night. I thought, you. I was like, I think Dale was there for this. But, if it yeah. involves climbing in danger, <laughs> I'm usually yeah, involved. Yeah. Patrick, bring this one down to the liquor store aisle. Compare this one to a drink that you'd find in the liquor store. Well, obviously it's a rum, but sure. it's not even a bottom shelf run like, that you might find like a gem in. It's just, you know, Malibu. I mean, it was sitting on top of my fridge as a kid, and I always wondered what it was. And then when I finally got old enough to drink it, I was like, well, this is disappointing. You realize so. why I just stayed up there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your so. whole childhood. Yeah. 
Oh, that's a good one. I will also do a rum as well. Um, I have rum for me is uh, it's not my favorite, but it can be really good in the in the company you keep. So something like this, if you're, you know, I'm sitting with my wife or I'm sitting with my bros and, hey, man, let's just pop it on. But we're really, we're not watching the film. We're just being bros. Like, hey, you want some rum? It's like, I don't want want to have it, but, like, if we're all having it, like, I want to just be friendly. (laughs) So, like, that's what this is. It's like, you know, is this movie good? Well, it's good if you, the company you keep, I suppose, if you watch it with some bros. The only thing it's got going for is the brand name. What's, oh, what, the, The, uh. The the Pirates of the Caribbean brand name. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that's the only thing it carries with it. And I think that's the only thing that's making it $800 million globally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone send me what you think the Fatal Fraud was in Pirates yes. 1, Curse of the Black Pearl. I you could email them at adam at 1890studios.com, or you could check the polls page. There'll be a little space at the bottom where you can tell him what you think. Right. I'll relay it to him. 1890studios.com. We will have a, uh, we'll have a poll up there. We'll yeah, we'll start. There. We'll start a year in review uh, movies too. Yeah, that'll be up at the top, and then you can go down to the bottom of the page where it'll be the actual poll of the week. Yes, and this one will have something about what's the flaw and uh, what pillars do you want to see coming up. A lot of work going on at 1890studios.com, but we're also on Facebook. Hang on, before I go into this, guys, movie of the week. Oh, uh, whole nine, nine yards. Yeah, whole nine yards. Yeah, whole nine nine yards I'm on yeah. whole nine yards. Okay. Anyway, we're on Facebook. Check us out there. Become our friend. Adam is uh, running that show kind of-ish, more or less. I'm doing something. It exists. I post on it. We're on I have no <laughs> idea what's happening with it. <laughs> we're, on, uh, we're on Twitter. Uh, we're at the NetX, N-E-T-E-X, but uh, we're on iTunes, so subscribe, please. We did a test a couple weeks ago. It takes 22 seconds to leave a rating, depending on how long you want to write your speech. Five stars, if you don't mind. Helps us get seen. We're, we're flying up in the iTunes uh, listings, and we owe it all to our listeners, and we appreciate that. Uh, tell a friend. We'd greatly appreciate it. Or three. Or three. Tell everyone you know, even if they're your enemy. That's what I always say. Keep them close. Uh, and the podcast closer. Oh. <laughs> wise words from a wise man. Patrick, <laughs> thanks for being on the podcast, brother. Anytime. Adam, looking across. I got to say, thanks for being here. Uh, thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for liking the docket. You know, it's oh, good stuff. It's a slog, uh, but somebody's got to do it. Docket, yeah. I mean, All right, guys. For being honest. We'll see you next week here at the Netflix Explorers, and we'll always say uh, so long and adios. Goodbye. I am Jack Sparrow. You are Jack Sparrow. We are Jack Sparrow. Come and be me. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs>